Hello YouTube! Sentinel Age back again with episode 4 of my Rotarycraft tutorial series. Last episode we got our furnace up and running, and this episode we're going to I'm going to show you how you can automate farming using only Rotarycraft. But first, I set up a little demonstration over here. I want to show you a important aspect of the shaft junction. So, last episode we talked about the shaft junction is how we combined the outputs of those two steam engines to power our friction heater. Uh, but what I didn't mention was the fact that they, the shaft junction, you have to make sure that both of the power inputs are running at the same speed. The way it works is that the shaft junction takes two inputs at the same speed, adds the torque together, and outputs it out the end. If they're at a different speeds, this is what happens. Yeah. It gives you a bunch of sparks, and you don't get any power output. So uh, you don't want that. So let's get into it. Uh, in order to automate our farming, uh, our harvesting anyway, uh, we're going to want to use a fan. The Rotarycraft fan is capable of breaking crops and automatically harvesting them if it runs at the proper speed. The fan is crafted really simply like so, with one impeller, two base panels, a shaft unit, and five planks. Gives you a fan. And for this demonstration, we're going to need four of them. If we open the handbook and we look at the fan, we can see that if you give it at least a speed of 512 radians per second, it can harvest crops. And the range is dependent on the amount of power that it's receiving. And it requires at least uh, one kilowatt of power. So I've got this set up over here for my automatic farming. And we're going to place our fans like so. Nope, not facing up like that. So you can point these in any direction, but the power always has to come in from the back. So if it's facing straight up, you've got to put it in from the bottom. You can also face it straight down. So we've got our fans facing our tilled and hydrated soil. There's some water <laughs> blocks underneath these dividers, in case you're wondering. So how to power our fans? Well, I'm going to use a windmill for this demonstration so I can show you how the wind turbine works. Uh, and because the wind turbine is actually a pretty good way to power this because uh, we have four fans for this setup. So the wind turbine is crafted using a hub and eight propeller blades. The propeller blades are crafted pretty simply with a base panel, a steel ingot, and a shaft unit. But the hubs require quite a bit more parts. They require a shaft bearing, a shaft core, and a gear. We already know how to make gears. The shaft core is pretty easy to make. It's a steel ingot and two shaft units. And there are quite a few things that require shaft cores, so if you're using like an applied energistics uh, network, you might want to automate that recipe, just so that it knows how to make it. But in order to make the shaft bearing, we need a steel ingot and eight ball bearings. And we make ball bearings by simply putting two steel ingots pretty much anywhere in a crafting grid, as long as they're not diagonal from each other, because that's how you make steel shears. But it's a shapeless recipe, you can pretty much put them anywhere, and you get eight ball bearings. So shaft bearings essentially cost three steel ingots. So once we have all that, we can combine it into a wind turbine. And that's what we're going to use to power our... Let's see here, where's my wind turbine? To power our fans. Now, the problem with the wind turbine is that it needs to be placed way up there. Uh, yeah, the wind turbine produce, only produces its maximum power when it's at Y level 128 or above. Um, placing it higher does not increase the power output, but placing it lower does decrease it, even one block lower. So you want to put it at Y level 28. Um, there's, there's no situation where you'd want to build one of these things lower. Um, you really need to have it at 128 or above. Um, so we're up here at 128, so I mean, if you're going to use this in a low-lying area, be prepared to build a tower of shafts. And <laughs> unfortunately, when you're building this tower of shafts, if you're uh, nerd pulling your way up just by jumping, these are all going to be upside down, <laughs> and you're going to have to hit each one with a sh with a um, screwdriver to turn it. Yeah, unfortunately. So um, anyway, 
placing the windmill is a bit finicky. Uh, you'll notice that if I hold shift and try and place it against this vessel gear, it doesn't work. That's because it always tries to place the fan uh, blades away from you. So if I can place it like like so, you have to place it like that, and then it, it turns it like this, so you've got to use your screwdriver to rotate it. And now that it's rotated properly, it's getting its uh, it's, it's producing power. Now, these also need to have empty space in front of them. Uh, 16 blocks, to be exact. Uh, any blocks within 16 blocks of this, uh, in front of this fan, is going to lower its power output. So keep that in mind. Make sure it has a nice, unobstructed uh, sky in front of it. And uh, uh, one benefit of shaft power is that it's lossless over distance. So it doesn't matter how long this shaft, uh, well, this tower of shafts is, it's not going to lose any power. Because it's rotational motion. Okay, so now we have our power coming down here, and we want to put it into our fans. But the windmill produces four kilowatts, and we only want to have one kilowatt going into each of these fans. So you got it. We got to use shaft junctions. And when we place the shaft junction, we want to shift right click it with a screwdriver to set it into splitting mode, and then turn it. Now we have to right click on the shaft junction with, without the screwdriver and select the ratio. So you can have the shaft junction output different uh, amounts of the power it receives in each of its two directions. So you can put uh, a 3 to 1 ratio out the inline or out the bend up to a 1 to 31 ratio or a 1 to 1 even split. And this one we're going to want. We want the 1 to 1 even split. So now we have 2 kilowatts of energy of power going in this direction and two kilowatts going in this direction. So we need another shaft junction here, also in splitting mode, to take those two kilowatts and put only one kilowatt into this. So we go one to one even, and our first fan is running. Now we place a stone shaft. We're going to need some stone shafts. And we can use a bevel gear here power this one. And it's spinning. And then we need a shaft junction here in splitting mode to take the two kilowatts and split it into one kilowatt in this direction. Make sure we set it to one to one to run that fan. One more shaft and a bevel gear and another shaft to run this fan. So all our fans are now running. They all have the same amount of power. They're all getting ten, 1 kilowatt at 1024 radians per second. And you'll notice when I right click on this with the angular transducer, we have this big blue bar. That is showing us the maximum range of the fan. That's the distance that it will push uh, items and entities. If I kind of go into flight and try and go this way, you'll, you'll notice that it slows me down a lot. I'm pushing forward and I'm moving a lot slower, so it's preventing me from walking forward very quickly. But it's not got enough power right now to push me away. Y but if I give it more power, and now I need to hold this ground again, uh, if I give it more power, uh, eventually it would be powerful enough to push me. Um, so you could use this for mob grinders. You can use these fans to push mobs along rather than using water and it'll be faster. So now that we've got our fans set up we can grab our crop of choice and in this case I'm going to use canola. Canola is a rotary craft crop and it is necessary. You need canola uh, to make lubricant so you're gonna have to farm this stuff so what better way than our rotary craft automatic farm. So there's our canola. So if I get out my extra utilities watering can and I start watering these crops to get them to grow faster. They grow pretty quick on their own, canola does, but we don't want it to grow faster for our demonstration here. Then we can see that once it gets grown up, and you get canola seeds just by bashing grass. Just like all just like regular seeds. Once it gets yellow flowers on top of it, it's fully grown. And you'll notice that as soon as it gets fully grown, the fan will, at seemingly random intervals, make the, uh, the seeds pop off. Because canola only produces seeds. 
Uh, if you did wheat, it would pop off the wheat. And you'll notice that the plant itself remains planted. Um, this is what allows the auto farming. Otherwise, you would need a way to replant the seeds, and Rotary Craft doesn't uh, currently have that. So there you go. Now that we've got our seeds coming this way, though, we need a way to collect them. And really the easiest way to collect them, uh, if I grab a chest, I'll just put a chest here. And then if you wanted, you could use just use hoppers. So you could just use hoppers, just like that. Like that. And there you go, that's working. That's going to work. You could use a lot of things. Um, you could probably use mine factory loaded conveyor belts if you've got that. Uh, if you've got extra utilities, I mean, is, or is it open blocks? If you've got open blocks, you could use a vacuum hopper. Um, that's pretty useful because with a vacuum hopper, you pretty much only need one here and one here to suck up all of it. Um, but anyway, uh, hoppers are easy. Rotarycraft does have a method of transporting items. Um, but it's a little more in, in depth, so I, we're going to talk about that later on. But uh, now, and I put away my watering can. I get my watering can back out, and I water some more of this canola. Come on, canola. You'll see that it can get collected in our hoppers. We've got our automatic farm. Now, you're probably wondering why I split up each of these lanes. Why is it four separate lanes rather than just all four right next to each other? Well, I noticed that when you put two or more right next to each other, sometimes when the seeds pop, they will land right on the border between the two tiles, and the fans won't push them. So the seeds will get stuck until they despawn. Um, so to maximize efficiency, I just split the lanes up, but obviously you don't need to. Uh, you could just put all you put them right next to each other, and it would work. It would be just fine. Just, but I decided to split them up just to make sure that there's no chance of those seeds getting stuck. And you know, the seeds getting stuck, I don't know what's causing it. Maybe it's just a graphical issue. But it's, but when I went over to the grab them, it, I did pick them up. So it wasn't just the seeds appearing to be there, but actually being in the chest. No, they were stuck between the fans. So it appears that the entities that are right between two fans might end up in a sweet spot where they don't get pushed. Or maybe it's just for seeds. I have no idea. I have no idea. And, um, of course, the reason that I don't have the plants going all the way to the final block, even though, you, even though they would still go into hoppers, is because I've noticed that the final block of range doesn't get harvested. So you don't want to plant your crops all the way to the very end of the blue uh, line because it won't get harvested. Now obviously you don't have to use windmills for this. Um, each one of these requires only, they only require 512 uh, rads in order to um, harvest crops and our steam engines run at 512 rads. So you could use a steam engine and run 16 of these things rather than using a windmill to run four. So, you know, that just shows you the various scale abilities of, uh, of Rotary Craft. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you, now you've got this um, auto farming thing, and uh, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, definitely make sure you've got canola production going, um, because next episode, I'm going to show you what, you what to do with that. I'm going to show you how to make lubricant um, by using the grinder. And we're also going to talk about uh, another type of green power generation. We're going to talk about the uh, hydrokinetic power plant, also known as a water wheel, which is my favorite so far. Um, but it's a bit tricky. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, and I, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.